it's Christmas. Have you noticed? Ooh, what fun. Christmas pudding, favourite movies, a YouTube binge watch. Oh, and click that subscribe button for me. Shopping, parties, more shopping, Christmas lights, but are we missing something? My name is Ian Curry and this is Thinking Out Loud. Come on, let me tell you what I think. What an amazingly busy time of year. Look at all those people. What on earth are they doing? I love Christmas, especially in London. One of these days I'll take you to see the back streets around Lombard Street and Cornhill. And those were places that inspired Charles Dickens to write A Christmas Carol. It's on the other side of the river there, over to the right of St Paul's. My dad used to work in Lombard Street in Glen Mills Bank, a famous counting house, until it was taken over by the Royal Bank of Scotland at the end of the 1960s. These days, we're far more likely to look at some of the posh parts of town. Their wonderful trees all lit up than those dark back streets. Advent calendars too are buried in my memory. We used to have one as children. There were a bunch of us and we all took turns to open the numbered doors to see what was in there. Usually chocolate, of course. <laughs> One of my favourite expensive shops in London is Fortnum & Mason and they got their start selling half-used candles from Buckingham Palace but these days they sell some of the best fudge you can find. They have a lovely advent calendar on their shop front. People often rave about the lights in Carnaby Street too but my favourite are the angels in Regent Street. All very nice. <laughs> Recently, on one of the busiest Christmas shopping days in London, I had a lovely walk through Kensington Gardens, where Peter Pan has his statue. So much quieter over there. Lovely. There's a part of me that loves the hustle and bustle of city life. But I really prefer being alone and quiet sometimes too. I enjoy being up on a hill somewhere, looking out over the city, almost as much as being down there in the thick of it. Cities can be scary places for some people. The first Christmas was no different. The city was jam-packed, but up on the hills overlooking the city, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. And I love this part. There they were, burly men used to fending off wild animals, and one angel appears, and they're all shaking in their boots. Other than an angel appearing being a little strange, did you ever wonder why a whole bunch of burly men were afraid? I wonder if we have the wrong idea of angels. Far from being wispy, sparkly, fluffy things, that's not at all how they're described. No, it seems to me that angels are far more like a, well, a cross between Rambo and Fagin, Dickens' East End gangster, than Tinkerbell. Now, if you keep that unorthodox image in mind, reading the next couple of sentences, you get a very different feel than the usual white flowing robed choir boys sweetly singing while shepherds watch their flocks by night. Don't be afraid. I'll bring you good news. It will be a great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord. He's been born today in Bethlehem. The city of David. And I can almost hear the angels say, And don't worry. If anything happens, I'll bring me mates round. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven. 
the whole idea of a calm, silent night with cattle gently mooing in the background seems to me to be a long way from the spiritual war that was brewing in the background. Those who knew stuff seem to be expecting things to kick off. There's a lovely account, often missed, further down the same page, of the story of an elderly woman who lived in the temple called Anna. Now once she heard what was going on, she went around telling everyone, He's the one! Watch out now! Jerusalem's about to get rescued! <laughs> and while I'm sure the romantic twinkle of Christmas lights and strange decorations on Christmas trees can help us slow down and remember the true meaning of Christmas, I wonder sometimes if we really know what the true meaning actually is. What do you think? Instead of looking at traditions and decorations, pudding and cake, and all the rest of it, perhaps take a few minutes this week to wonder how you would react to meeting an angel. Perhaps you already have. Until next time, have a very happy Christmas. Goodbye.